Okay, so now to style our primary content areas of our header, our content, and our footer IDs um, in our CSS code here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the header. Now, before we do this, notice that there is no extra spacing on the side here, and I do want a little bit extra spacing there. So what I'm going to do in the wrapper style, I'm going to add a padding of 5 pixels. Now, without putting a pack left, right, top, or bottom, a um, little bit of code there, it pretty much just makes uh, means that it wants to be on all sides. To put that 5 pixel padding on all sides. So it gives us this uh, spacing that's on all sides of our wrapper. So it kind of makes it stand out a little bit more. So we can go ahead and get rid of this background color for the header. Because, like I said, we're go I'm going to be using the uh, header image that I have created here. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. So to use a background image, you use this code. Whoops. Oops, and it's, uh, there we go. So background tag image, and then you have URL, parentheses. And inside of these parentheses, you put the location of your image. So we want to be in the current directory, and then put us in the image directory, and then header.png. Now, to make it so it doesn't repeat in all directions, we only want to uh, repeat this, or we don't want to repeat this at all. So we want to type background tag repeat and no tech repeat. So that will make it so it doesn't repeat anywhere. So you can go ahead and refresh and you can see right away we have this background here. Now because the image is slightly larger, it's 150 pixels, I'm going to then change the height of this header to 150 pixels. Now inside of our header area here, I'm going to get rid of this header text because we are going to put an image inside of here. So we need to put in image tags we need to set the source image. Um, the source attribute of the image tag uh, simply means where your image is. So it's in the current directory, and then the images directory, and then logo.png. You can also set a, a style, which I'm not going to set for right now, but you definitely want to set an alt value. Now the alt attribute in any element on an HTML page essentially means that uh, for the example of an image, if the image isn't found, then it'll display this text. So I'm just going to make it say Nick Frosty logo. So we can go ahead and refresh, and we have our logo image here. Now the problem with this is that it's pushed up and squished up against this edge here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to apply padding on our header to move it down. So we can go back over to our CSS, and we will set padding tack top to say 20 pixels. And then if we go ahead and refresh, you can see it kicks it down 20 pixels. Um, then we want to set padding tack left to say 20 pixels as well. And then it kicks it over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the padding on the top to 15 pixels and leave the left padding to 10. And then I'm also going to set right padding of 20. So we have padding on the right side of 20. Now there's no visual change for that uh, because it isn't needed on that side. There's nothing on that side to add any visual change. Now since we've added padding to the top of our div here, uh, we need to then compensate the height for that. So since we set the padding on the top to 15 pixels and the height was 150, we need to now set it to 135 so the height will then still equal 150 and it'll get rid of that space there so it squishes everything back together now we don't want that space there but we want everything to be equal so I'm going to set a margin tack bottom so it's going to add margin space or empty space on the bottom of this element and let's say 10 pixels so it'll add a 10 pixel spacing in between there which gives us that spacing back so what I'm also going to do is instead of putting it on the header I'm going to put margin top and bottom of 10 pixels on the content. So if we refresh, we now have spacing, and it might be a little bit hard to see because this is such a light color, but there's 10 pixel spacing on each side of this. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and work on our navigation area. Now I forgot to add this earlier, and our navigation area will be uh, right before our content and right after our header. So I'm going to change the ID to nav, 
and change the text to navigation. So if we refresh the page, we now have this new element here. So we're going we are going to now style it. Since it's after our header tag, or after our header ID and before our content, that's why I'm going to put it in the CSS. So we have nav. Now the first thing I'm going to do is set margin on the top of 10 pixels, so it'll space it out. And I'm also going to set a background color. Now the background color I'm going to set is actually the, the uh, color of this background image here. So that color is hash 196 E83. So if we go ahead and refresh now, we now have this color here. Um, now there's nothing really special about this, it's just text. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the text color by um, declaring the color style and I'm going to set the text color to white so that will make the text stick out a lot more so now that we have this here the problem is that we're going to have a bunch of links in here so we can go ahead and fill in some dummy links so our first link will be uh, very simple now creating links in HTML instead of using the link tag you want to use the A tag or the anchor tag now the anchor tag will simply give you a hover over link um, that you can actually style and change what colors or what will happen to that text or item when it's hovered. Uh, and I will demonstrate that. And it, the first parameter it usually takes is the href, uh, or its first attribute that it has is the href. Now this is the location of the file you want to link to. Now since I'm working with an index.php file, I'm going to set the href to dot slash. So it's going to take us to the root of this directory. In this case, it's the HTML, it's our uh, index file, uh, and it doesn't matter what extension. And I'm going to set the text to home. Now, I'm also going to create some other ones. Say, contact, about, things like this. Um, now, I'm going to set the href value to hash. Now, when you set the href value to hash in um, CSS, or HTML rather, it essentially means that you don't want it to go anywhere. You want it to stay on the, on the current page. So we can go ahead and refresh the page now. So we have links and we click on them, nothing happens. Notice that in the URL box here, our link changes. We go to the home page here, and it's just like that. So, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to make our logo image a, uh, a link to our home page as well. So, we are just going to surround the image tags with anchor tags. So, we can now, we hover over, nothing special. Now we refresh, we can hover over and it's linked to our file here. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to style the navigation links. So to style links that are specifically in a certain section, for example of the navigation section, what we want to do is I'm going to come down further in the code here, put some extra lines, add in a comment, and say nav links. So, since we want to style items in the wrapper and nav IDs, we want to style the anchor tag inside of the nav ID. So in order to do that, we just type in anchor or uh, A for anchor, and then we have the styles here. Now I'm going to set the color to say white. So right away we have instant. Uh, it stands out instantly, so it's good. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set padding, or rather I'm going to set a text decoration. Now the text decoration style um, can take many different uh, values and, the, and you generally use underline, overline, or none. Now since we already have an underline effect, and I don't want that in our links, by setting it to none it will get rid of the underline effect like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply padding. Now I'm going to apply padding on the top and bottom first and the reason for this is because by applying padding on the top and bottom here, um, it will give a space on the top and bottom, so it'll stand out more. It won't be so small. So inside of here, I'm going to say 10 pixels to start and set it to the bottom as well. Now, after refreshing the page here, notice that it doesn't really do anything. And the reason being is because the navigation, we need to set a padding of 10 pixels on all sides. 
So we can go ahead and refresh and it's spaced out now. So we have 10 pixels on the top and bottom and everything. Um, but instead, I'm going to set padding on the top to 5 pixels, the bottom to 5 pixels, and the left and right to 10 pixels. So it will space everything out accordingly. So now that we have this, we can actually hover over um, our links and we can click them and everything and they're spaced out a little bit more. So now what we're going to do is we're going to style the links their hover effect. So to get a hover effect and to get a custom hover effect rather on any single style that you want, what you want to do is instead of having wrapper, nav, and anchor, what you want to do is you want to have anchor colon hover. So it will change the style every time you hover over. Now I'm just going to set the hover color or the text color to red when we hover over. So if we refresh, now we can hover over and it'll change the text color. So it immediately stands out and makes it a lot more noticeable. So the only problem with this is our links are really squished together. So now we are going to apply some padding on the left and right sides. Now we're going to go with five pixels or uh, ten pixels rather on the left and right. So if we refresh, we now have our links spaced out a lot more. Now, instead of having them just have this hover effect where the color changes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a background color for the hover. So, for now, I'm just going to set this to EEE. -E -E. So, when we hover, it has that effect and you can see it. But notice that, actually, let me change the color so you can see it more. Notice that when we hover, we have uh, the over space there. And that's because I set this top and bottom padding to 10 when it should have been set to 5. So by changing that and refreshing, we now have our spacing proper. Uh, the only problem with this is that there's an extra one pixel there at the bottom. So we are going to set the padding on the bottom to 6 pixels. So if we refresh, it now covers everything there. Now, the only problem with this is that there's extra spacing there on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. So I'm going to come back up here to the navigation style and get rid of the left and right padding. So by refreshing, we now have our smaller padding here. So now this kind of doesn't really stick out too much, obviously, because the background color is what it is, which we will be changing that in a minute. But um, it doesn't stick out as much when it's covered. So what we're going to do is on the navigation here, I'm going to apply a border. Now I'm going to put a two pixel border. So two pixel solid border of this uh, background color here. So by doing this, it makes the box slightly thicker. And when we hover over, we now have a outline of our links. So you can actually see them a lot nicer. So now the background color for the hover link, I'm going to set it to white. So it stands out a lot more. So we can now hover and we have this background color here. So that takes care of our navigation um, styling for now. Don't forget to check out my website, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe on YouTube.